All right, let's talk real quick about just the general structures of kind of the macroscopic kidney here. So this is kind of the same perspective you're going to see when you do your dissections, but we're obviously going to have a little bit more detail and a little bit more help with some coloring uh, in this model. So let's start with the big general features. Uh, the whole kidney, it's kind of a familiar structure. You saw it already with lymph nodes uh, and other organs like the brain where you have a cortex around the outside and a medulla in the inside. So B right here is actually indicating the cortex, the renal cortex right on the outside. And then A here is indicating this region called the medulla. So you can see this darker red section. This is all the medulla, very similar to what you would see in a lymph node, just extremely large. All right, so as we move through within the medulla, you actually have these little uh, pyramid shaped things. And these are the renal pyramids all the way through here. And at the end of each renal pyramid, the very tip of it, there are, there's a, what's called a papilla, and the renal papilla specifically. Papilla uh, literally means nipple, um, and so it kind of takes on a nipple structure in three dimensions. And when you do your dissection, uh, you can see this in 3D, and you'll see kind of where it gets its name. But again, remember to refer to it as the renal papilla because we see a lot of papilla, the papillae throughout the body. So let's see what else we have here. Um, moving through, you actually have the whole this whole area inside the kidney, the open space. If we were to sort of rip this whole structure out, we'd call the space the sinus. Um, but with everything left in here, this area intact as you see it right now is usually referred to as the renal pelvis. And so this is this main connective tissue area where all the filtrate kind of ends up filtering into before it goes down the ureter right down here. So from the renal pelvis, moving up towards those renal papillae, you have two more structures here. You have 5A and 5B. And so 5A is what's called the major calyx. Calyx means uh, like wine glass, like, like you're actually using a cup to kind of catch the filtrate that's coming out of the renal papilla. Uh, the, the large one is the major calyx, the small one's the minor calyx, pretty straightforward. So if you were to track the pathway of filtrate out of the papilla, it would go minor calyx, then through a major calyx, and then into the renal pelvis, and then out the ureter into the bladder. All right, let's see what other terms we have here. Oh, the kidney has a capsule on the outside, uh, specifically the renal capsule. Uh, there are many other capsules, so make sure you refer to that specifically around the outside, just a connective tissue layer like we see around all organs. What you also have is uh, renal columns, and the columns, this model doesn't show it really ideally, but you see it here and here, and they're actually in between the renal pyramids. This one's kind of nice. You see this light connective tissue area. These are these columns that divide the pyramids, and uh, they're actually con collections of collecting ducts. Uh, and from a macroscopic perspective, they appear to be much lighter than everything else, so they form these columns. You'll see them probably a little bit easier, actually, in your dissection. Let's see, you covered pretty much everything from the macroscopic view. These little dots here, uh, those are actually the, the beginnings of the glomeruli um, and the, the renal corpuscle itself, which we'll look at again in a, in a different video uh, when we zoom in a little bit closer. The other thing that you can see here, uh, just a little bit in this slide, is the pathway of blood flow in the kidney. And so here we've got renal artery and vein, pretty straightforward. Um, the first branch, just like all vessels, you just give it a new name after a branching. And so what you see as you move from the renal artery, you go into the segmental artery. It's that first branch. Then there's another branch, and you go into the interlobar artery. This means between the lobes of the kidney. And then you have a red blood vessel here, an artery that arcs over, and this is called the arcuate artery. And then you have these little blood vessels that are radiating out into the cortex, and they're named the cortical radiate arteries. And so we'll zoom in a little bit closer, and that's not the end of the pathway of blood, but when you get microscopic, you get into the afferent and efferent arterioles and the vasa recta. You just can't see them very clearly here. So on this model, it sort of ends with the cortical radiate uh, arteries. And then the pathway for the venous flow is actually just the same thing, except for there is no segmental vein. So you will go just from interlobar vein 
directly into the renal vein itself, number one here. So there is a difference. Everything else is the same. It's basically the same with arteries and veins, except for there is no segmental vein. I think that's pretty much it from your list. Pretty straightforward to the things that you can see from the outside uh, from this perspective.